G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Friday evening here in Australia and the markets are up a little bit again, getting oh so close to that $2 trillion mark. I think it did kind of sort of flex on that $2 trillion mark for a minute there, but then has pulled back. But look, still up 3.2%. So again, I mean, have a look. It's basically a sea of green at the moment. People are just super bullish again, but we do have the weekend upon us. Are we going to see you know, the traditional weekend pullback, or are we going to push through? And if we do, then a CME gap's probably formed, and then that'll probably have to be covered at some stage. But let's move along. Look, volume down a little bit. So, you know, it is what it is. Volume's down, but prices uh, and the market are up. Bitcoin around 46000 and gas uh, sitting around about sort of $2.11. But, I mean, have a look at that. Oh, ADA absolutely pumping 15 percent i mean things are looking pretty good so what's done the best then in the last 24 hours in the top 100 what's the best mover oh the graph has outdone ada there you go i've been sitting on the graph for a while so i'll have to have a look and see how that's doing ada synthetics a nice move sushi voyager i mean they've been doing extremely well ever since there was the news that uh, I think they bought Coin Coiny or something like that. Uh, and yeah, they've been doing extremely well. Chili's making another move. So oh, looking quite nice. But again, I am mindful that the weekend is upon us. All right. Has anything not done well, though? Do we have any sort of, you know, anything been beaten around <laughs> in the top 100 considering the market's generally up? Uh, IOXT down a little bit, but they did have a really good pump. Uh, content value network down a little bit safe moon look not really hardly any losses the worst loss in the top 100 was three percent and again that's for a coin that did extremely well over the sort of days prior so nothing too bad and then look you're just getting into the green so let's have a look at bitcoin and again this is i always focus on the bitcoin chart because it really is going to tell us what the market is going to do and until that changes then we don't really need to search other coins too much unless you're specifically trying to work out what that coin's going to do. But as for what the market is going to do, it still follows Bitcoin. So that's why I always revert to the Bitcoin chart. And should that ever change in the future, then I'll change as well. But at the moment, Bitcoin still leads the market. I'm not sure when and even if that will ever change. I get the feeling like it probably will change in the future, but just not yet. Now we can see we broke uh, out back into sorry this uh, upwards trending channel we have now come back down and tested this uh, down trending line and tested it again and now we're sitting back at 46,000 so again we've just really got this kind of hurdle that we're having trouble at the moment and it's around about sort of here forty six and a half thousand dollars we can say we're stuck right there with a weekend upon us. So again, maybe we sort of travel sideways and again, come back down and retest that 44, maybe even the $42,000 level. It is possible, but I just get the feeling like we're gonna go back up. But again, I don't know if it's gonna happen over this weekend. We'll have to wait and see. And you know, CME gaps get created over weekends. And if they don't, uh, you know, fill over the weekend then it usually happens sort of monday morning thereabouts if it's going to be filled sometimes it can go past and come back and get it later but the volume's very sort of low at the moment so we'll have to wait and see uh where bitcoin's going to go you know we're flirting with this upwards long term upwards trending channel uh and then we break out of it just and then we break back up into it so yeah interesting times ahead and you know generally if you've been in for a little while, particularly, you know, some people might have got lucky. They might have got in sort of around back here. They're probably doing extremely well at the moment. And then anyone who's been in since last year should be absolutely flying, particularly if you got in, you know, sort of early uh, last year and particularly around March, uh, you'll be uh, doing quite well. All right, a couple of interesting stories. I'm not going to take too much time. It is a Friday night here in Australia, and I've got a weekend off, and I'd like to go out and enjoy it just a little bit. All right, Australian crypto users will have access to tax reporting services through crypto.com. I remember hearing about this a while ago, and it sounds like uh, it's now being rolled out. So crypto holders in the United States, Canada, and now Australia can generate tax reports using the exchange. 
So this is really, really good because that is something that's a bit hard, particularly for people who do their own tax. Now you just basically go and it'll print everything out for you and it becomes a whole lot easier. And people running self-managed super funds with crypto and all sorts of things like that. And, you know, even people who... Uh, have their taxes done through normal tax agents, it makes it easier for the tax agent. Uh, you basically just print out a few bits and pieces and it'll do it all for you. Super easy. And this is going to be the way of the future. You know, getting rid of sort of tax agents and it's all going to be there on the blockchain and it'll basically, you know, you just sort of, you know, you'll provide some link or, you know, post off uh, a couple of documents and something and your taxes will be done for you. I truly believe that's how it's going to happen because it's all going to be on the blockchain. But well done to crypto.com. This is uh, a platform that I think I'm going to have to sign up for. I'm not a member of it yet, but I do like what they've been doing. And this just makes it a whole lot easier as well. So that is something I'll be looking at. All right, we spoke about it for a couple of days. So Poly Network, one of the biggest hacks, $600 million. Seems like all the funds have been returned except for some USDT uh, that was frozen. So $600 million, I'm sure Box Mining uh, is probably feeling pretty good right about now because it sounded like he had quite a lot of money tied up in that. Uh, and it'll be good to know, you know, for all those people that they're going to get their money back. That really is $600 million. That is a lot. Uh, and it does show kind of the resilience of the space that, you know, hacks aren't, you know, really a great way to go on crypto. It's not that they can't be done and you can't get away with it. People have, but eventually the long arm of the law usually catches up with those people. I don't know of too many people that did, you know, big hacks and have gotten away with it. Not long term, you know, they may be on the run for a little while, you know, five years, 10 years or something, but generally, eventually, the long, the long arm of the law, sorry, he catches up with them and then they have to pay the consequences. So I'm really just glad that, you know, all these people got their money back because, you know, I have no doubt that, you know, most of, if not all of the people that had their money involved in Poly Network, they worked really hard for it and they're just like everyone else. They're, you know, trying to get ahead in life and, you know, to have your money kind of stolen from you. Uh, that's pretty tough. All right, FTX. So FTX US, which is the US affiliate of the crypto exchange, FTX, intends to offer cryptocurrency derivative trading in less than a year. Now, that'll be interesting because there's all sorts of stuff going on at the moment with regulation and that. But word on the street, or at least according to, uh, you know, BitBoy, is that, you know, FTX falls into uh, the financial conglomerate or the financial uh, group that uh, he always talks about. Uh, and so maybe they are feeling like they might get a good regulation allowing them to do that. So it says here, we definitely hope to be able to offer them inside of a year, Harrison told the publication. Quite frank frankly, we, we could have or should have started a long time ago, but we're definitely interested in going through the process and collaborating with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission to be able to offer those products in the US, uh, the CTF regulate. Uh, the C, sorry, the CFTC regulates derivatives. So again, that's something that synthetics were doing. They were going to offer synthetic versions of that. Uh, I haven't even used uh, Quenta yet on synthetics. I just had so many other things, and I tried to uh, log on the other day, and I couldn't get on there. Something was happening. I, I don't know. So I haven't had a chance to check it out. But that is something that even synthetics has to worry about. Is you know regulators coming after them, and I'm hoping that synthetics are also you know trying to make sure that they can, you know, operate without any kind of massive uh, legal sort of hurdles because that definitely is a concern for synthetics. But look, it looks like FTX are planning on getting out there and doing that. So there's no reason synthetics kind of can't get out there and do it as well, except for, I guess, the difference is uh, FTX uh, is centralised and synthetics is completely decentralised. Well, yeah, it's decentralized, you know. I guess it depends on your version of, you know, how decentralized things are. But, you know, there's a couple of different DAOs now for synthetics. So they are decentralized, but, you know, there are still, you know, sort of semi-central points to it. All right, last but not least, 
So Chainlink's data oracles are now live on Arbitrum One with the T with the TSO with the team also planning to soon launch its proof of reserve and verifiable random function on the layer two. So this is what people have been waiting for for a really long time. All these, you know, Arbitrum, Optimism, you know, all these kind of things. There's so many layer two solutions that are coming and Chainlink are finally there. Now we're really just waiting on Chainlink to finally get their uh, proof of stake going and that'd be interesting. I've got some Chainlink that I'd definitely like to uh, stake. I have it working for me on BlockFi at the moment, some of it, not all of it, uh, but it would be nice to yeah lock it up just on the chain itself. Now, last but not least, speaking of synthetics again, so Optimism has also made significant recent progress with synthetics now, enabling trading on the layer two scaling solution just two weeks ago. So again, I haven't even had a chance to use this yet. I've just been so busy with work and you know life I think that's something that I'm going to do this weekend is have a look uh, at Quenta uh, and how that goes. And I might even do a video on it. Look, that's it from me. I wasn't going to take up too much time. It is a Friday evening. I'm going to go have a beer and watch the footy, to be honest. <laughs> There's not a whole lot going on in the crypto space at the moment. And again, really, I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen. I think we probably have a little bit of a pullback over the weekend and then maybe sort of next Monday, Tuesday before we start to push higher again. But none of, that, none of that is financial advice. It is all just personal opinion. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train. And I'll see you next time.